So you want to learn how to run a report in LendingPad. Well, let me show you how step by step. In this video, we're actually going to go through four items. The first are the two places where you can find reports in LendingPad. Second, how to run reports in LendingPad. Third, how to export the reports that you run in LendingPad. And fourth, how to create custom reports in LendingPad. So, let's get started. The first place that you find reports is on your dashboard. These are what are called the summary reports. So it's our three day, 10 day, 30 day on a cross, our cases and pipeline, loans by assignment, underwriter work, volume and loans by status. All of these are summary reports and these summary reports show up on the dashboard. The other place you get reports is by going to the main menu and clicking on reports. And here you see that we have some system reports. I'm gonna go ahead and show all of them that I have in here. You might have more, mine is a test system. So you can look at all the reports that I have here um, that are system reports. So we have campaign, closing, commission, life of loan, your NMLS report or your call report. Everyone needs that one. What I wanna do is look at a couple of these reports specifically so you can learn how to run reports. All right, let's take a look at loan by status. So I'm going to click here next to the I. And I see that I have status, campaigns, so I can put in the different campaigns if I wanted to. I can do this by status if I wanted to, and also by state. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on search, which is just going to give me everything. I didn't filter by anything. So it's just gonna give me everything in here. I have eight items. I could have decided that I did want to filter, right? I could filter by estimate days in closing. I could have filtered by the status itself. So let's say instead I decided I'm gonna filter by status and I'm gonna filter by lead status, right? So it's gonna give me all the lead statuses here. I'll click search. And now I'm just left with these three items. Let's go ahead and export this report. So up here at the top right, you see where it says export report. And then you see once I've clicked it, down here at the bottom it says the export report request has been placed. So now that that's there, I need to go back to reports. And then over to the left here on the right hand side, the furthest left button on the right hand side, we have export report request. I'll click there and you'll see that request here, loans by status and the download. It opens up my save as dialog and I'm able to save this and open it up in Excel and I'll save that to my desktop. So that's one report that you may want to not only run but also export so you can manipulate it further or share it. So let's go back over here to reports. Let's look at another report. The report you're probably interested in is the NMLS report. Again, we're gonna learn how to run that NMLS report. It's very similar. I'm gonna click here on NMLS. Again, I can choose by state if I have multiple states. I can choose a time period. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and do last quarter. Next, we're gonna look at version. You'll notice here that it defaults to standard and standard is for brokers. When we do the drop down, we have expanded and you'll use expanded if you're a lender. I'm gonna continue with standard. I'm gonna click search. And this is your typical NMLS report that we're used to seeing as it's laid out. And so when you export the report, if you do it as Excel, right, like Microsoft Excel, it'll export a report that looks exactly like what you see on your screen. Okay, exactly what you're used to. However, I think it's better to export it as an XML. But I wanna show you what it looks like so you're not startled. So I'm gonna click here on XML. Again, at the bottom, it's gonna tell me, hey, your report request has been placed. I'm gonna go back to reports. And on this far right, the 
for this left of the far right buttons, I'm gonna to go to export report request. And here I'm gonna see the NMLS report that I just ran. So here it is, download. And you can see it doesn't quite look what you might imagine. It doesn't look neat, but that's okay. It's one machine talking to another, so you have to trust. So if you have a PC, go ahead and use Control S, and that should bring up your save dialog. If you have a Mac or iOS, you should use Command um, S. And then go ahead and just hit save. It'll be on your desktop, and when you go to load your call report, you just upload the XML file, one machine will read to another. Okay, back over here to our reports tab. So we're gonna go back up to the reports menu. And in this reports menu, one of the things I wanna show you is how to create a custom report. So you might need to create a custom report because there's certain things that you want to report on within your office, maybe some of those custom labels and milestones that you've set up. It just might be that you like to look up data a little bit differently than the reports that are already set up in the system. You may have to run a specific report to meet state requirements. So let me go ahead and show you how to do that. So while you're in here, we're going to go to the far right at the top, we're going to go to manage reports. And when we're in Manage Reports, we can click on Create New Report. So, you see I have an option to create a company or a personal. So, I wanna make a big note here. If you're logged into the system, as a systems administrator, you will be able to create company-wide reports, meaning everyone within your company will be able to use the report. If you're not logged in as the systems administrator, you will only have the option to create personal reports, meaning you're creating this just for yourself and only for your use. Okay, let's keep going. So I'm gonna click on company. And now that I have, I have the option, a couple of tabs here, we're gonna go through each of them. General information, we have to name the report. So I'm gonna do the Texas um, call log. They have their own particular report. It is active. Of course, we want our reports to be active. If you have a description you want to put in, you can put that in. Then our next tab is filters. And we need to add a new group. So you're going to have a lot of choices with your filters here. So you might want to do property state. That would make sense. So we can have property state equals, or we can say since this is the Texas report, we only want it to be Texas anyway and I can put that in as hard-coded. Or if I leave that property state off, I'll have the option in the report itself when I go to run it to do a drop down and select Texas. Now I'm gonna add a new group. So in this one, maybe I want to go ahead and do by application date. Okay, so I would go in here and I could search uh, by date, right? So I want to show you some of the other options. Assigned user, user type, branch, campaign, channel type, lender, um, loan dates, loan status, status and period, purpose, etc. So I'm going to pick loan dates equals and I'm just going to leave that part blank. Okay? So that tells you what you're filtering for so that you can get to the correct information. The next tab over is fields. This is gonna show you what's showing up in your columns, okay? So usually there's a list of things that you wanna know. That's what you would show up in your columns. So let's start adding some new fields. So I'm gonna click on, going over to my far right, add new fields, I'm gonna click there. And we can add as many fields at the same time as we'd like. And just about every data point parameter in the system is available for you to create your custom report. So I have a couple of fields that I want to add. I want to add application date. So as I go through, I can see basic reporting details. There's some information here. Um, underwriting type, assignment. So I can go down, I can see all that information, borrower information, etc. So I know 
I have all the things on my list. I want to list my application date, my applicant name, applicant contact information, loan status, occupancy, name of my loan originator, my loan originator, NMLS ID, and the lender. So knowing I have all those things are going to be in different places. I'm going to go through and I'm going to start looking for them. But you know, you're going to get bored looking for all of them. Here's my loan officer NMLS ID. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. And let's see, basic reporting fields. I had borrowers come up already, so that's cool. So we need a borrower contact. So I'm going to put in the email. Uh, keep going down. And I'm going to put the borrower's name. That seems good. And I'm already at Cobar, so I'll go ahead and do that email and co-borrower name. And then, great point, I'm already down here at critical dates. I need the application taken date. Now, I notice I have these tabs here. I know I don't need any other critical dates, so I'm just going to close that tab. And now I'm at some disclosure information. So I'm going to check I've done the applicant date, application date, applicant name, their contact information. Um, I still need loan status, occupancy, name of originator, and lender. So those are things I'm looking for. They're not in disclosure, uh, not in program. So what I'm going to do to make things easier on myself, I'm gonna scroll back up here to the top. I'm going to close these out as well. Knowing that that's kind of where I'm at, right? And I'm going to go ahead and put in one of those parameters that I do now. You can just type it in so I can put in status, right? So now I have status, right? So you can also add them this way too if you don't want to scroll through. But the first time I do suggest scrolling through, seeing all the information that's there so that you can create your reports. I also need occupancy. So there's my occupancy type. I also need the name of my loan officer. So I can just scroll to it under assignments of loan officer and I can click the name there. So I think I'm missing the lender. So I'm gonna type that up here at the top. And here I can put in the lender. So now I have all my pieces of information that I need. Again, you can go through, add whatever you need to. I'm going to reset my filter just so that you can see as we scroll all the way down to the bottom. In case you had some of those labels and milestones that you created, custom labels and milestones, you'll have those here. And also, if you're wanting to do by campaign, you'll be able to access the information by campaign as well. All right. So now we have everything we want. I'm going to click Add Selected Fields. And they're all in here in just kind of a random order. So if you have more than six fields that you're choosing, um, this automatically defaults the column size to medium. But if you are choosing more than six fields, it's a good idea to use small or extra small so you can get everything on one page. So here we can organize this because it kind of looks random right now, right? So the first thing we want to look at is application date. So critical dates, application taken, I want that at the top. So I'm just going to drag and drop that to the top, um, dragging these three little things here. And then the next thing I want was the applicant's name. So borrower name and the borrower contact. And I'm going to do the same for the co-borrower. And then I wanted the loan status. So here's status. Oops, there we go. And then I need the occupancy. So here's occupancy type. Then I need the name of the loan originator, their NMLS ID, and the lender. So everything is now also in the right order as I want it to appear. And here again, I can change my column sizes. I guess I did a front, so I can just go ahead and make them one small or extra small. So maybe like my critical dates I know should be extra small it's not going to be uh, super large maybe I want to leave the um, the name of my borrower and the email addresses uh, medium I can go to status 
and make that small. Occupancy type, I can make that small. Loan officer's name, I might leave uh, medium, but make the NMLS extra small and leave the lender as medium. So you can kind of pick and choose what you'd like to do. If I want them all small again, I can come up here and make them all small and set column sizes to all fields. It asks me to confirm that, and now it sets it to all small. Okay, then since I'm making this a company-wide report, I can come over to user roles, and again, I can decide who can view this report. So I can turn it on by just clicking here, this box in the far right to give them all check mark, turn them all on, and then I can decide well, maybe the consumer doesn't need to see this report. Uh, maybe my loan assistant doesn't need to see this report. Or any of my individual loan officers or processors. I'm just going to have it to where the branch manager, the loan processing manager, quality control and systems admin can see this report. So once I've made those choices, I can click Save Changes. So now it says the company report, Texas Call Log, was created successfully. So now that the Texas call report has been created, I can go back to reports. I can find it here. And now you'll see I have a bunch of system generated reports and my company generated report, which is my Texas call log. So I'm able to run the report now. So I can click next to it and I can decide that I wanna run this year to date. It's locked in with the property state being Texas. You can see what I've done year to date that would be submitted for the call log. That is how you run reports in LendingPad. Questions? You can go to support here in the main menu or reach out to your LendingPad account executive. Thank you for choosing LendingPad as your loan origination system.